right, in this video I'm going to talk about waves and how they relate to energy. So remember that mechanical waves require a medium. So they're going to be moving through either a solid liquid or gas and their particles are going to be arranged in different ways. So if you have a solid, the particles are very tightly packed together. And a liquid, you still have pretty tightly packed particles, except they can actually flow past one another Whereas in solids, they're sort of fixed in position, but they can vibrate and move. And you may have, remember this from, uh, from chemistry. Now gases, they have particles that are very far apart from one another. So when we talk about the transmission of energy between these particles, it's essentially like a collision, an elastic collision, like we learned about uh, in uh, our energy unit. So if you have solid particles or liquid particles, the particles are very close together and therefore the collision is going to happen very quickly because they don't have very far to travel in order to come in contact with the next particle. So that's why when a sound or a mechanical wave is traveling through a solid or liquid, it moves very fast. Whereas a gas, it tends to move a little bit slower because the particles are farther apart and they have to travel further distance in order to collide with one another. Now, in chemistry, we discuss this idea of kinetic molecular theory. And kinetic molecular theory says that temperature is really relative to the kinetic motion of the particles of a substance. So, uh, we know for physics that kinetic is the energy of motion. So if you have particles that are in a gas, gas particles are moving very quickly around and therefore they tend to have a higher temperature. And the faster they are moving, the warmer they are. So when um, we talk about the transfer of energy through a wave, temperature is also a variable. So the speed of sound in air is like 343 meters per second. But if the air is really warm, the, uh, it tends to move quicker because the particles already have enough kinetic energy or a lot of kinetic energy and are going pretty fast. And so if you try to transmit energy through them, they can do that a lot quicker than if they are cool air and would be moving relatively slow. Now, if we look at a mechanical wave, and we know that sound waves are, uh, are compression waves or longitudinal waves, but if we look at the model of a wave like this, okay, remember that we talked about the idea of amplitude here, or the wave height. Okay? So if you have a wave here, and then you have a wave here, this wave has a much larger amplitude than this wave. <coughs> and this right here, the amplitude, actually tells you something about the, the energy that the wave is uh, carrying. So the higher it is, or the taller the amplitude, the more the energy. Now when you hear the words like amplitude, you typically think of like an amplifier making something louder, right? Or amplifying a sound. And that's really how it works in, um, in a sound wave, is that if it has an a higher amplitude, it's actually going to be louder. <clears throat> Whereas in terms of light, if it has a higher amplitude, it's going to be typically brighter. <clears throat> now, if we look at a light wave, there's also another factor that contributes to the energy of a light wave. Okay. And uh, in chemistry, if you've taken chemistry already, you probably have already learned this, but um, we'll go more into detail in it in this unit. But the length of a wave of light, of electromagnetic radiation, radiation can tell you the color, if it's visible light, or the type of light that it is. So on the electromagnetic spectrum, really small waves are um, like gamma rays and x-rays and UV rays and then you get into the um, visible light spectrum and really small waves are actually blue and I know I just threw that red but um, so their wavelength is blue also then you have larger waves and if this was like a large um, visible light wave it would be red okay 
So the wavelength tells you something about the uh, color of the wave. However, we also know that the frequency of light is related to the energy that that light carries as well. So um, you may recognize this equation if you took uh, chemistry from me. So energy in joules is equal to, this is Planck's constant and this is frequency. Now, I'm not going to have you perform any calculations in here with this, um, but I just use it to show you um, this relationship to sort of relate to a lot of what you may have heard in chemistry class. So, there's two ways that energy relates to a wave. One in the frequency uh, of the wave, but also in the amplitude of the wave.